I am going to post this video on anomalous origin of the left coronary artery from a pulmonary artery that is El Kappa. Yes, yes, it's a good idea that you subscribe the channel and uh, whenever I put the new uh, video online, you would be notified. Now, what is actually anomalous origin of uh, coronary artery from pulmonary artery called El Kappa? The normally that's the right coronary artery which is right from the right sinus of the uh, of the aorta and the left coronary artery arises from the left sinus of Valsalva and comes anteriorly. So this is the left right coronary artery and the left coronary artery but instead the coronary artery coming from the aorta it comes uh, takes origin from the pulmonary artery right. So now as the PA pressures are lower than the aorta pressure, now that the reverse flow starts from aorta to right coronary artery, collaterals and the flow reversal in the left coronary artery into the aorta becomes a coronary left to right shunt. Okay, symptoms include chest pain, dyspnea, cardiomegaly could be present on an x-ray chest and there would be signs of left atrial enlargement, pulmonary prothora in case the left right shunt is large, dilated pulmonary artery, ECG typically shows an anterolateral infarctum or in the LBV pattern. This is one of the patients showing an ECG of left ventricle hypertrophy and the STT changes which were considered initially as a uh, LVH with the strain pattern. Now this El Kappa or called bland white garland syndrome, it's a rare congenital abnormality happening in 0.26 of the cases. The mortality is about 90% in just one uh, year of life because of the coronary steel and uh, repeated myocardial damage, myocardial infarctions. And the 90% patients, those who present in the first year, they present with heart failure or they can have a sudden cardiac arrest. Echocardiography is the mainstay in the diagnosis of coronary artery disease or at least suspecting the Al Kappa or anomalous origin of the left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery and not from the aorta. You know, look at this four chamber view, a pical four chamber view. Here, what you see is that there is an anterolateral wall which is a hypokinetic. You see the left atrium is dilated, right ventricle and right atrium are fine. LV is also dilated, and ejection fraction, which we calculated, was 48% by Simpson method. The point to note here is the, the anterolateral papillary muscle which is fibrotic and scarred. So that's what is a glaring sign of a coronary artery disease. Again, this is the white arrow showing calcification of the anterolateral papillary muscle and you see a blob kind of sign where you normally see a coronary sinus this is AV groove where the right coronary artery runs which is dilated and you see a circle like this on the AV groove on the right side. When we put the color Doppler on on the four chamber view then we see this uh, rounded structure is a right coronary artery with an increased flow. You would understand the pathology as we go along. Here you see the posterior wall is moving fine, the anteroceptal is hypokinetic and LV is dilated with increased EPSS. Now the lateral wall is, uh, anterior lateral wall is showing signs of hypokinesia and you see some endocardial calcification. Again these are signs of chronic ischemia. Now parasternal short acid view at the level of the aortic valve, you see the origin of the right coronary artery and the right coronary artery is definitely dilated with an increased flow. The left coronary artery was not visualized arising from the aorta. So if you do not see, if you want to rule out El Kappa, you must document 
left coronary artery arising from uh, the aorta or the left coronary sinus that's very very important in uh, neonatal or pediatric population where you have a patient with a heart failure lv ejection fraction reduced or regional wall mushroom normality you must look for the left coronary artery arising from aorta to rule out l kappa now in this case you see there uh, the multiple collaterals on the lateral side these are the coronary collaterals because they happen in a different phase in the diastole now these are the large dilated arteries you see this is the circumflex and posterior descending arteries uh, which is this is a pical three vessel view where you see the left atrium left ventricle and this is in between the two chamber and a pical three chamber view when we go again to a pulmonary artery then you see pulmonary artery flow is retrograde you see and the flow coming toward the probe in the red color and this normally you would suspect that there is a patient with a ductus arteriosus flow but here you see on the side of the pulmonary artery you see another flow uh, which is going away from the transducer coming and entering into the pulmonary artery and this is what is left anterior descending a uh, left anterior artery or left common artery left coronary artery opening into the pulmonary artery ct angio is probably the best modality to see the various uh, anatomical landmark it gives you a three dimensional picture of coronary artery anatomy and their dilatation coronary angio is required in in less number of patient these days you see the right coronary artery filling by the contrast and from there there are collaterals filling the left the left coronary artery going back into the pulmonary artery the right coronary artery you have collaterals and then left coronary artery back into the pulmonary artery you see the pulmonary artery flow is being visualized i present you another case of a 26 year old female with 22 weeks of gestation which came to us for a fetal echo i keep on reminding you guys repeatedly at 20 to 22 weeks of gestation size of the fetal heart is the size of an almond so this is what we see in that size of an almond that uh, let me uh, orient you to the fetal echo this is the left ventricle left atrium this is aorta this is the right ventricle now the chambers are normally uh, sized and they are not dilated or hypertrophied or uh, hypokinetic but what you see here this is the pericardium right on the top and this is below the pericardium you see the flow uh, which is a flow of a coronary artery we do see prominent coronary arteries in many conditions in fetal situation in particular the fetal hypoxia we thought this could be a fetal hypoxia or other reasons for having a prominent coronary arteries till we went and uh, we scanned the pulmonary artery again to and to uh, orient you this is uh, the left ventricle left atrium this is little angled view this is aorta aortic valve pulmonary artery and that's the pulmonary valve you see a small linear structure which you see a very nicely demonstrated of uh, a uh, flow which is entering into the pulmonary artery that is what that is the left coronary artery now the flow here is bidirectional as compared to the flow when the child is born or when you seen that case of an adult showing a l kappa the reason being the pulmonary artery and aorta flow during the fetal circulation have almost normal pressures so that's why in this coronary artery the left coronary artery which is entering into the pulmonary artery you have a bidirectional flow to again reiterate little magnified view showing you 
a pulmonary artery which is branching. This is the cross section of the aorta and the aortic valve. And here what you see a long segment of left coronary artery entering into the pulmonary artery. So this is the case of a fetus having uh, L kappa or anomalous origin of left coronary artery from pulmonary artery. Surgically, the only treatment is surgery. We do need a palliation before doing surgery because most of these patients are in heart failure. But once we do the surgery, there are many ways of uh, detaching pulmonary artery, uh, coronary artery, left coronary from the pulmonary artery with the with the button and implanting right into the aorta or implanting into the right coronary artery because these things are little difficult one may not have a large space to implant uh, these arteries otherwise then we can take a piece of of a sleeve of a pulmonary artery and put it across to the aorta these are the various ways and techniques of performing surgery in l kappa rarely the Kyoshi's procedure is that you go through the pulmonary artery and you create a baffle and enter the artery into the so this is the right coronary artery you have a baffle through the baffle transpulmonary puncture and you go into the aorta this is not a procedure of choice these days because as the age grows this graft is not going to grow become smaller and there are many issues with this surgery i hope you liked this uh, rare case series of l kappa yes yes please subscribe the video so that whenever i post a new video you would be notified as and when i do it